Oh, we do. This is great. So I'm Steve. Steve Navid. Patrick. Patrick. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Greg? Yeah. So Greg and I are uh, minor minority shareholders and advisors. And Patrick is the CEO. Okay. And I'm the connection to USD. You are okay. So yep. you, so you're the CEO. Yes. Okay. And then you you two are investors, advisors. Yep. Yes and yes. Yes and yes. And then uh, actively, pretty actively involved, but full not full time. I would. Not yeah. yet. We hope after some seed money. <laughs> Okay, so then with that seed money, you're trying to, you'll have to hire, who are the people you need to hire to grow the team? Yeah, I don't think that that's Well, really not in accurate. seed, but in yeah. Series A. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. with funding. We both have other jobs. Yeah. I work on this with Patrick on a regular basis, but it's not my full-time job. Okay, so what are you helping Patrick with? Uh, everything from business development to technology. I built and sold uh, successful startups in the past. Okay, in town? Here. Yeah. Okay. E Which all sold here to yeah, e-commerce. E-commerce. E Software, yeah. yep. Sold, got acquired by a company based out of Massachusetts in 2012. And then previous to that, I've done a couple other businesses that got sort of sold out just small. So I've never, I've, I've, this is the third year in a row that I've been a judge. I've never had investors uh, and advisors as part of it. But I actually like that because my question to you is, what did you like in the deal at this early stage with the most risk? regardless of how much equity Patrick gave you? It's a really good question. What did you, yeah. So I um, sit down with a lot of guys like Patrick, um, probably once a week, right? And I try to get involved sort of once a year with one of these types of deals. What, I, what impressed me so much about Patrick specifically was how much he had done to date. Um, he had come up with the idea, taught himself how to do software development, built a proof of concept, proved a 40 cent user acquisition cost, proved a viral engine of growth, and done all of the design work and then spec'd out everything that the development teams were gonna need to be able to execute on this all by himself. And that's something that I had never seen before. And I, just coming from doing software development, I was like, wow, this is really, really impressive. And with a little bit of guidance, we can really take this thing to the, to the moon. And so when, when was that? Uh, that was in February? End of January, early February. Yeah. Yeah. This year? Yeah. Okay, so this is brand new. This is very brand new. new. Okay. Yeah. And, and then, you similar got story. similar, okay. And you guys didn't know each other from before. I haven't known Greg now. No. We grew up in the same town. Though. Yes, we did. I went yeah. to. Uh, I went. I grew up with his sister. Actually, went to elementary okay. school, middle school, high school. So yes. yeah. And I went to the other high school. <laughs> got it. So I mean, for for early stage investing, and you, you, I mean, you both know this. Uh, it's all about the guy. It's all about the vision. And then, but after that, very quickly after that, it's about the team. And there's no team right now. That's correct. So that's the biggest risk as to if I was to decide to invest or not is there is no team. That's a good point. Yeah, no, it, it's very true. I mean, I'm, I think that Patrick will attest to the fact that I'm very hands-on with him right now. Mm -hmm. uh, my goal is to in, in, inject some team members, right? Yeah. I think we're actively looking for that, right? But we're, you know, that's a process. Um, and in the meanwhile, I'm filling in as a substitute for those roles. Okay. So what's... What are the missing puzzle pieces? Here? I think probably the biggest missing public pu puzzle piece is probably the marketing side, right? That Patrick really wants to focus on product development and CEO duties, right? And I think that the biggest piece is really bringing on board somebody who can focus on traction. Yeah. Okay. So, so you said you want to focus on product development and CEO duties. I want to see. I want to be able to oversee product development, okay. and then also manage the direction of the company. Um, my my goal first and foremost is to produce a useful product. Um, do, do, you think, do you think you're the right CEO? Yes, I do. Why? Because I know the industry, I know the technology, I know how to sell it to this particular industry, I know how it's going to be used, um, I know the product. All right. That's, that's a, my, my partner's French, and him being very uh, on PC, he'll ask that question if someone ever says, Oh, you've never been CEO before. Well, if I owned a restaurant and I was going to, I needed to hire a chef, and someone came and applied for the, that job, and I asked them, Have you ever been a chef before? They said, No, but I bust tables. Why would I hire that person as a chef? So obviously, everyone needs their first chance at a CEO, but I mean, that was a good answer in that you know the space. Um, so, what's um, what, the use of funds? Talk a little sure. bit about that. Yeah, so the use of funds right now, we, we've gotten $50,000, and that has gone straight to contracting at two different development teams. They're going to help us push what I've already built out to web and Apple devices. 
Um, so you're not doing that in-house? You're going to hire someone in no, Mexico so, yeah, or local? It, or Speed no. is a really crucial element in this thing right. and okay. from our perspective. And um, there's a cost associated with building that team right? Okay. and the timetable it takes to do that. I think our goal is absolutely to bring all the development in-house. Um, but for right now, there's a stopgap measure. And, and the notion is all of these teams are under the, impre under the understanding that this development is coming in-house. It's just a matter of time. Okay. Yeah. So, so um, who's, who's doing, is it an outsourcing shop in town or is so, it yeah, in so Russia? There are two teams. One of them is local here in San Diego. Okay. They specialize in front-end iOS development. The other team is out in Massachusetts and they specialize in server-side and e-commerce development. So we're doing this in two steps. We're building out a server side, very strong server side, with people who really know how to build that type of, of environment. And they're building out a front end separately, knowing that in the future we're going to be attaching different front ends to this back end that's already built. One important note on the server side team is that's my team. Like those are my guys. So you know, I've them. worked with them for a long time. Okay. I've built the software frameworks that they're running on. So. Because I, I mean, we, we've outsourced too and used third parties to get going fast, but that's the big risk. That's the big risk. Yeah, yeah so. and that, that's exact. So there were two big decision making factors on that. Mm -hmm. One was, um, you know, yes, we can outsource, but what's the team we're going to get? Mm -hmm. And so this provided a certain level of comfort on, on that front. And then the other um, sort of concern with outsourcing is that information changing, right? When you get a group of guys in a room together and you can whiteboard together and do all this stuff and like figure out what the product is, that's a really important aspect and that's really difficult to do outsourcing. But since Patrick had already literally done the entire user interface and all of the schematic, it was a very easy handoff, which makes outsourcing a much more viable option. And these two companies are, are tolerating me kind of being there in the room with them, watching everything that they're doing and helping me learn too how software development companies work because I'm coming at this as an individual developer. Mm. So it's a good educational experience for me, but they're also, you know, they, every question that they have, I'm there to answer immediately. And it was a good dialogue back and forth. So how long were you working on this before you got these two guys to back you? Uh, I started at the end of last summer. That's okay. when I had the first experience of saying, you know, I want to do this with my phone. I don't want to touch my camera again, do any of this. Um, I sat down, it took about two and a half months to build. Um, I did some testing with some colleagues and, and professional colleagues and friends. And through, began to make some connections in December, eventually got connected to Greg towards the end of January. And then that's where we are today. Um, well then, in regards, so you taught yourself how to code. Very impressive, you've, what you've done. But, I mean, what's the barrier of entry? Because a guy that taught himself how to code did this. I mean, once you start getting some traction, what's it, some, someone else with more experience and more money copying you? So that's a, that's a really, question. really good question. So basically, Patrick hasn't built this yet. What Patrick has Respect built out. is a single user app that works. You can download it on Android and it works and you can tag it and you can save stuff. At the size and scale that we're talking about, there's definitely some technical need here. We recognize that this is a um, speed is an important factor in this, right? And that's why I think Patrick has focused as much on finding the right teams to get this done as quickly as possible and do it correctly. Um, but it comes down to the user experience and making it seamless and simple. And um, he didn't wasn't capable of doing that on his own. He knew he wasn't capable of doing that on his own. He figured out he had something here and said, I need to get the capital to go and find the real team that can actually build this and go and find those right people, right? And I think that's what we've done. Yeah. So then when, when do you go live and what's the revenue model? July 15th is the launch date that I am pressing on. Well, it's my birthday, uh, so. <laughs> oh, <there you> <laughs> Perfect. Um, uh, <laughs> that worked out well. There you go. <laughs> you win. <laughs> the, uh, the, the, revenue met, the revenue model is based on a premium pricing plan. So you have zero dollars, you can try the application out. Okay, but then, but then do you make money off that advertising? Some it's, a monthly, it's a monthly it's subscription. A monthly oh, I thought you said freemium. Yeah, right. Which free into monthly subscription. Then it goes, okay. So right. you can use a little bit for free, but you can got use it. a little got bit it. more for a fee. Okay. Um, so seven bucks a month gets you X amount of surveys per month. 20 bucks a month, which is the next level up, gets you a little bit more, a little more access to the app itself. Um, we're also looking at doing some enterprise and academic licenses accounts. So Brown University is, is a client. Uh, Columbia and UC Davis will be clients. Um, I know there are a few other institutions. I think, there's a, I think there's a question mark around pricing. I think yeah. it's something yeah. that's going to yeah. be don't know. tested. And yeah. We won't know. Yeah, exactly. I think what we the initial feedback that we've gotten from the industry is, wow, that's way too cheap, yeah. right? Well, I was going to say $7. I mean, yeah. $7 I mean, a month, yeah. In, in the enterprise deals, I mean, that would excite the, me more if you said 
five thousand dollars a month. I think that that's the thing that's really interesting about this is we're talking about forty eight hundred. You know, I mean, we're for for the the projections that we're working on, even on that low monetary basis. And this is always the hardest thing. It's like doing projections that's and like space, overstating yeah. or understating, and you really we really won't know until we test the yeah. pricing mm -hmm. and go to market with it. Yeah, yeah. So. Have you talked to? I mean, are there people waiting to pay you and bust out their credit card once you're live? I mean. Or, or a you, lot of my professional colleagues are asking for it, and they're asking when is it going to be available, when you know, show us how to use it. Okay. And so why don't you do this? Why don't you go to them and say, pay us to build it, and instead of us charging you monthly, just it's almost like a pilot fee or consult fee. That's interesting. Cause then yeah, we've, we've, we've uh, one of our, our sort of overall round strategy um, is to do it in two parallel tracks. And one is uh, to come into the tech industry and find good sort of angel money or seed money. But in the parallel track is um, going to property development companies and construction companies, getting uh, advisors who come in at that level who can also build out the go-to-market strategy with us and be those first early adopters. Okay. In fact, we were just uh, just, just approached in the, in the hall by, by, from a yeah, guy who has a large organization and says, what's your enterprise pricing model? Let's sit down yeah. on Saturday and talk about doing this. Right? I, if I, were, I wouldn't raise money if I were you guys right now. Is I would do just that, is get them to pay you to build it. I mean, we invested in a company a couple of years ago that, I mean, the guy had nothing. It was an idea, and Qualcomm paid him a million dollars to build to build, build it. And, yeah, that's a really interesting point. Though. I think the hard part is if they pay us to build it, do they have ownership over? No, no, yeah. no. It's no ownership. It's non-dilutive, but they pay you as a pilot and or get sure. a free license in perpetuity. No, or? not no. Just you say for a year okay. or you know put put in a period of time on. If they want exclusivity, well, they pay a lot more, right? Sure, yeah. you know, for that's a period right. of time. It's like Apple and the AT and T for three years. No one else could do it. Sure, yeah. they paid for that. Sure. So, I mean, that's all negotiable. Yeah, that's how I mean, the previous e-commerce company I built was built exactly that way. It was built. Was that through Qualcomm Ventures, like a CDC area, or was that another part of their business that was looking to buy a particular product? Are you talking about ex yeah. the example I'm talking about? Yeah. It was different. It was a different okay. division. Yeah. Qualcomm Ventures just invests. It, yeah, it's yeah, a yeah. CDC operation. But if, so. if you're going towards procurement, it, it, that's what I understand. Yeah. 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 That's being really, really interesting. And if you as an advisor want to give us some leads on that, we'd be very interested. Well, I mean, it would have to be... It wouldn't be Qualcomm for you guys. Clearly, it would be, yeah. I mean, you need to talk to people that would be your customers, your That's end right. user. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it sounds like you, That's having been the end user, you built it for yourself. So it's nice to say, I know the pain point because I was dealing with it. But then if you go to that end user and say, I'll solve that problem for you, mm -hmm. but pay us sure. to do that. Mm -hmm. it's a, and it's a revenue, it's, it's non dilutive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, unless you win this, that's good too. But, uh, <laughs> also, not <-delivered. laughs> So, what's um, what do you, what do you what? How do you scale it? Like, you go live. How do you scale this? How do you get yeah. users? So, how do you get so users? First, yeah. we're going to be looking at you know the, the target market that I know and that I know best, and I'm very confident it's going to adopt it quickly. But at the same time, we're going to be putting up a number of different landing pages and testing. You know, what do different markets respond to? Are we going to be going into property management? Are we going to insurance appraising? We're going to be doing different types of analytics to understand where is our lowest user acquisition cost going to be. And then once we understand that, once we have this next version up and we can understand those metrics, then begin to pivot and see what other markets are going. And, and I stress again from the fundamental perspective of starting with a server team that's building out a foundation where we can plug in different front end uh, front ends on top of the APIs. We're, we're planning towards that sort of portability. I, I think it's a direct marketing strategy, yeah. right? It's pay-per-click advertising, mm -hmm. it's banner advertising, it's retargeting up front, mm -hmm. right? Um, and then I think one of the things that's compelling is the there is a very collaborative shared nature of this, which in, its, uh, in and of itself is a viral sort of a thing, right? We hate talking about like, oh, we're going to have a viral business. But at the same time, this notion of an architect coming into a job site with a product and saying, ah, all the images that all of you guys need are in this tool called Photo Survey. I send the email. Everybody gets that email and says, oh, click here to download the app. OK, great. They all get it. Now they can see all the photos. And they go, great. Wow, this tool is cool. I'm now on my other job site with some new architect. And we think that there will actually be quite mm -hmm. a collaborative and the reason we think that is because the original 1,100 users that, that Patrick uh, paid to get 
converted into 1,800 users via word of mouth, right? And that's with a very subpar product. So we think that once this product, no offense. <laughs> we think that once this product It is, was good enough to get them. Yeah, so. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, once we get there, I, I, th I, think, uh, I think we're going to see some really, really fast growth. And that's what we're counting on. I got to put the sign up, folks. Uh, uh, meeting's over. Uh, the next phase is for you and the audience to either hang out here or in the lobby. Uh, it's time for the investors to confer and decide how to allocate the price. Thank you, Scott. Thank you very much. Thanks. 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 Thanks.